All right, so I got a couple of cool air condensing units here. This is system one, it's running. Okay, we do the switch over every PM. So we're here every month for this PM and we do a switch over manually to have equal run times. Now, when we switched over to system two yesterday, we noticed that after a certain amount of time that the temperature of the box wasn't dropping before we got a chance to come to the roof. And this one here, system two, was not running so we had to flip back to system one and now today we're going to figure out what's wrong with this unit so i have found a dead fuse here control fuse and when i go across powers off by the way verified if i go across this fuse with the meter on the ohm setting we have ol there so what is this fuse in line with now we have to figure that out in order to go look to see what the problem could be and if we look at the diagram here, this fuse is in line with a crankcase heater and a receiver heater. There are some coils of contactors as well and some, some other stuff down here that could be involved in the wiring. But I am going to make a guess that we may have a problem with one of these heaters right here that caused this fuse to blow. So to check the loads, for example, what I would do is I would go to terminal three, put one meter lead on terminal three and the other one to ground, and that should tell me if I have any continuity to ground on any of these, right? And then same thing, four and five, if I go from four to ground, should tell me if I have any continuity to ground through this coil right so on and so forth so right now I'm on terminal 4 you can see the 4 there to ground and I'm and I'm picking up 518 ohms to ground usually that would be bad right but you have to remember one thing on the common side the transformer is grounded so whenever you're trying to look for a short to ground and you see something that's grounded intentionally you have to get rid of that in order to do, to do the troubleshooting properly. So here is the ground right here that's in the diagram. If we take that off, I'll show you what happens. So I pulled that ground wire off, just dangling there, and then back to four and ground and OL. So I've gone through all of these. I don't find any problems to ground. So next I think I'm gonna pull out the mega and I'm gonna check those crankcase heaters to make sure there's no issues with them. So before I grab the Megger, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the fuse because I got no shorts to ground as far as my meter is concerned. I'm gonna replace the fuse, okay? And then I'm going to take some amp draws just to see if everything's in check that way. And then if I get some weird readings, obviously I'll get the Megger out and check those heaters, but I think I wanna check them anyway to be on the safe side. But anytime you put a new fuse in, guys, always, always, check to make sure that the fuse is good because you don't want to just trust it. So this one here, that one there is good. All right, so I got the fuse replaced. I am drawing 0.46 amps. All right, that's a two amp fuse, so we're well under the amp draw of that fuse that the fuse can handle. Now, down here, here's the receiver. It has bubble wrap for insulation, which I don't really like, uh, but you can see it's starting to strip away. And I don't know if you've seen that, guys, but there's some arcing going on underneath this insulation or the bubble wrap where the receiver heater is. I just seen it, you can see it arc right there. And you can see where the bubble wrap. So that is where the short's coming from. That wiring is somehow being damaged somehow and it's arcing back there. And you can actually see right there, it almost looks like it's been melted or burnt. You can see that right there. It's very strange, I've never seen that before. So it looks like this is where the short is. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna isolate the receiver heater from the system and get this thing back up and running because I know it's coming from there because I just saw it arc three or four times. All right, so for now, we've just isolated the receiver heater. That is that black conduit that comes in here, this blue and red wire, which is right here. So we've just isolated those. So they're not gonna be in the circuit anymore until we can get a new receiver heater, obviously rip that insulation off and re-insulate it as well. There's one other thing I'm gonna check here, and that is a potential sign of a leak 
with this oil right here. There's an oil stain right here. I got my leak detector and I'm gonna check this flange plate here to see if there's any leak from this filter dryer. Okay, so that was leak check. There was no leaks there. I don't know where the oil came from. Maybe it was a leak at some point in time, but it's not leaking now, I can assure you that. Um, just to give you an update, a week and a half in after isolating that receiver heater, we are running and we're running well, no issues whatsoever. You saw that insulation behind there. You saw the arcing, you heard the popping. That's why I didn't grab the Megger because it was very apparent where the short was coming from. That's why that was isolated and that's why we're moving forward with replacing that and replacing that, that insulation as well. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content, if you're learning, if you're enjoying it. Till next time, happy HVACing.